All right, guys, we got us a job here. We're going to go over to the pacemaker to get done. I'm going to be helping out the uh, welding shop here. So what we have is a piece of uh, two inch by four inch heavy wall mechanical tubing. That's going to be a pin boss. This is a real typical job that they handle over there at the welding shop quite often. Uh, most likely for one of the garbage trucks or one of the city garbage trucks is what this kind of stuff goes to. And what we need to do is a very simple operation. All we need to do is set this guy up and counterbore the ends for the brass bushing or the bronze bushing, I mean, to uh, press in there. We also need to go ahead and bore it all the way through so that there is adequate clearance for the pin to go through here. So this OD, I believe, was uh, two and a quarter. Yep, so you got a two and a quarter OD, and then I believe it's for a two inch pin. Yeah, so it looks like they've got it. Uh, they give it about 20 thousandths clearance for the pin to go in there. So pretty, pretty simple enough. Now this is the kind of stuff that uh, my buddy Joe, he tries to tackle this kind of stuff himself anytime he can. Uh, he enjoys trying to get some of the machine work done whenever he's able to do it. But his small lathe over there that he's got, he's got a nice lathe, a little sharp, but it did not, it did not come with a steady rest. We're gonna see if we can help him out with that, see if we can find him a steady rest for the machine, but that's the problem. He's only got the chuck, and this is way too much stick out for that small lathe of his. I believe it's like a 14 inch swing and obviously you get some chatter. But that's all part of his learning process as well. And I always go over there and help him out anytime he's having issues and try to help him out with his tools and, and let him know what's happening. But this one here, he just, he asked me, he says, man, do you mind, you mind getting this done for me? So that's what we're gonna do. Now you'll see that the OD has already been skint down and all they're doing is just trying to uh, true it up. And I'm probably gonna go through here and turn this OD. We're gonna chuck it up in our forge jaw, get it running true. And I will go ahead and just skin the OD, just enough to clean it up so that we have a nice true surface there that's true with our bore once we do our counter bore here. And then when we flip it around, then we have another area to indicate on that's already true with the other side. As far as the OD diameter, that's not really critical, although he wants to leave it as big as possible. But what they have is two steel plates that's already been, you know, basically torch cut out, I'm sure that this is just gonna slide up in and it'll be welded on both sides. So the OD of it isn't critical on a size as far as it having a fit in a precise hole. It's just a flame cut hole there that it's gonna go in. So we'll clean it up, probably kiss the ends of the, the, the face there just a little bit and um, just a pretty, pretty routine manual lay job here. So we'll head over to the pacemaker. I'm gonna get that set up and we'll go ahead and get this done for Joe. So we already got our jaws open up to four inches equally using my rule. This should just fit right up in there. And this actually will go up in the chuck a little bit further, just like that. So there is no um, in link dimension. All we, all we just need to do is just clean the end up right there, okay? So we're not concerned about an overall length as long as we don't face a bunch of material off. And just chuck it lightly just to get it in there. Now what we'll do is we'll just true the OD up here. Get it up here close to the chuck jaws and then we'll, uh, we'll check it out here. It should be pretty straight, just uh, indicating it like that, but we wanna make sure that it, that it is gonna be uh, concentric. So we're about just over 90 thousandths out. That's your low jaw. And then this is your low jaw. Loosen your low, tighten your high, keep working it until you get close, and then you want to start snugging up your, uh, your high jaws to get everything kind of tightened up there. Still low. Now we're within about 10, maybe 12 thou. get you in there, show you a little tighter shot as we finish this up. We're down to our last few adjustments. All right, so we got about six thousandths. I'll go ahead and bump the, the low slightly. And it's gonna bring it real close. Now we're within a couple of thousandths. 
You got a little high spot right in there. And we're just going to average it out so that we can true it up on our end there. That's within, that's within two. Low. All right. So we're within a thousandths plus there's a high spot right in there. So I think that's going to be pretty good right there where it's at. And we may just run it. I can see some inconsistencies. I can already tell that this end is kind of running out a little bit, but this may be this may be because of the way it was it was set up previously. Didn't have a lot of area to chuck on. You had a lot of stick out there, and that thing was probably trying to whip around. And it may have come out of being concentric whenever it was being turned originally. I'll play around with this and get it to where I know I like it. I don't. I don't know if I'm going to be trying to bump this around 25 because it should be nice and concentric and true with the chuck dolls already. This is a pretty nice turned area. So what we may do from here is just go ahead and just make it true. So turn this all the way back to the jaws just enough to true it up. And then of course do our counter bore and then our other, our second counter bore for our bushing there. All right, change of plan. We've, I, I loosened it up and pulled it out. I'm gonna just go about this different because it was, it was kicking out so much on this end that it would have taken about 50 thousandths to clean this up. So we just need to go ahead and get it running true on both ends, true enough to where we can skin this nice and true there. So I've got it pulled out. We're just gonna pull it out about right there. And what I can do I can true this OD up, get it nice and round, and then we can set our steady rest over here to support this in. All right, so let me, uh, let's try this again. Let's see where it's at there. Not bad. So this should help it. We can get this, this trued up on this end, and then we can bump this in with our uh, soft blow and get it kind of moved where we want. About 15 or so. All right, snug to high since I haven't tightened that one yet. High, low. high so it's on 16 14 so a couple of thousandths there got a there's a low spot right there so we're going to try to average it out again bump that one loose tighten the high so that it's kind of averaged between the between the jaws that's looking a little bit better right there so now that we got that I'm going to make sure all four jaws are snug that we don't have a loose jaw there and they all feel good. And that's within two thousandths, all right? So let me get a soft blow. And we'll move this indicator down here to this end, right about there. Let's we'll see what it's doing. Yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and get a soft blow and uh, we'll bump this around. All right, where's our high? There's our low, so our high is right about in there. This is only going to move so much and it's just kind of bouncing now. So we're going to have to get to a point where and what I'm doing, I'm trying to absorb the impact and the vibrations with my hand whenever I do that there. So that's uh, five, six thousandths out right there but that's probably about the best we're going to get because I don't know how straight and true this is. This could be kind of looking like a snake whenever it was originally machined there because it was hanging out so far. This might have been moving around on this whenever it was being turned. So I'll try it again. But you get to a point where you go past the straightness of getting it concentric and then you're just hurting it. So see, that's exactly what we did there. So I'm going to get it 
that's about where I had it, about six thousandths. And I want to make sure that our jaws are good and tight on this end so that we can turn it true. That's your high. And this one's your high, so let's make sure it's tight. Went in about two thousandths right there. So I think that's where we're gonna roll with it right there. And that's why I decided to go ahead and pull it out because I had so much deflection on this end. But this is, this is more of the natural position of where this tube wants to be sitting in these jaws once these are tight on there. So trying to get this to zero, you're, you're pinching on the jaws at that point, trying to turn it past its natural area of where it wants to be chucked up at. I hope that makes sense. It's, uh, things like that can be a little hard to explain for someone that's not really used to this kind of work there, but I always try to uh, share my thoughts as I'm going through these processes here for those that are trying to watch and learn how to do this. So uh, this is trued up, so now we can move on to our machining. We'll just go ahead and clean this end up a little bit, just make the face look nice. Very light cut here, so as to not try to move it in the jaws. Just a touch more. So that's my favorite go-to turning insert, the ISCAR IC8250. Go ahead and just chamfer that edge to get a true surface there so that we can uh, put our center on there for turning. Don't want to hit it hard, we just want to clean it up. Make a machined chamfer there. All right, that should be good enough for our bell nose center. Get our turning tool and then we'll get it positioned here at the end so we can uh, get our center up here. All right, we're gonna get the OD touched off and get this running true. I got the pacemaker set to 455 RPMs and we're gonna run a 14 thousandths uh, feed rate here. A Little bit more. This is 20 thousandths. All right, we'll try that right there. 20,000 off the OD. All right, let's come back and take another 10 because that's not cleaning that up. We'll let that go down and see what that does. Some of those light cuts in this steel here does not like to chip off. There we go. and chamfer the end as well. A 
We got the OD turned nice and true, and then I went ahead and hit it with some emery just to slick it up and kind of blend some of those rub marks where the chips were rubbing on the surface there. So we'll go ahead and move our tailstock back now, and then we're gonna set up our steady rest to support it. This handle, you always have to take it off and move it a couple times in order to clear the, the carriage. All right, we'll get our ways cleaned off good of our chips here, and then we'll get our steady rest down here. Always wipe the bottom, make sure there's no chips that were stuck to it the last time you set it down. And go the correct direction. Very close to what we had it set last time we used it, which was for uh, that bushing for Will. Looks like that's pretty good right about there. Just trying to get whatever chips are kind of settled in there on the rollers off help if you put it in gear. Come up to where you just touch. I always say it's kind of like working a micrometer. You want it to touch and you can kind of feel it without prying down on the knob there. The, just a little bit of slack in the threads that you need to adjust in order to get it, the backlash out of it. And we'll walk around and do the backside. It's right where it needs to be. Lay that down that way so I'm not leaning over the moving part. And the top one, you just come down. You don't have to snug it, but just get it set. I like to adjust the nut on the back just to make sure that this arm is actually pulled in square so that the roller is, is rolling square on the face there. So that should be good to go. We should be ready for our boring now. All right, so we've got our first bar set up. I've got it stuck out nine inches. We're just gonna go just over halfway on our clearance bore. So we're just gonna make it just something over two inches, enough for our two inch pin to slide through there. Doesn't have to be uh, on size. And then I'll, uh, I'm gonna pull this out and use a shorter boring bar to make our counter bore for our bushing. Got it touched off and let's see what how it reacts here. I'm using a uh, pretty sharp insert there to try to uh, reduce the chatter and get underneath that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. I'm not really concerned about the finish. I just want a clearance hole. So let's see where we're at right now. So right at two inches, looks like about two to three thousandths over two inches. So I'm just going to take another 50 thousandths on the dial and uh, let that cut go through there. All right, that's looking pretty good. going to go up close to the tool and just back it off. We won't be coming back through here, I don't think. All right, back off on our bore.
All right, that should be good. I'm going to go ahead and double check it. So two inch 42 is what we ended up at. Getting some deflection off this. I still got to, um, I got some work to do here on the cross slide and uh, adjusting the gib here. This is a job that I'm wanting to get to soon. We need to pull this gib and actually we're gonna, we're gonna end up gluing a shim to the backside, the static side of the gib there so I can get some more adjustment because it's adjusted all the way in and I'm still getting uh, some movement out of this right there. So we gotta play with this. That's why these long stick out like this, it's not working too well because you're getting too much deflection out here. I'm trying to leave a, um, a chattery finish in there and it's hard to get it on size. But our short bar that we're gonna use, it's gonna work fine for our counterbore there. All right, so that's gonna be our clearance bore right there. Let me go ahead and check it and make sure we got our clearance where we want it. I was looking for two and a sixteenth, and that looks like we're nearly spot on that. Two inches, 60, 61 thousandths. So that's plenty of clearance for a two inch pin to go through there. So I'm gonna swap out bars here. We're gonna have a short stick out bar to do our counter bore, which is gonna be a couple inches deep there for our bushing. All right, this is gonna be our finishing bar. This is one of my new Walter boring bars there, but I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna set it using my scale here to an even size. So we're at, I'm just gonna set it to three and a half like that. Just using scale measurement to three and a half inches. And what I'm gonna do is subtract. So that's three and a half. We're gonna subtract one and seven eighths. Let's get this tight here. We're gonna subtract one and seven eighths from that measurement. All right, so when we bring this up here, we scale this, the bar going in, and what we want is one and five eighths between this face and the face of our tubing. And then that will make sure that we're in there one and seven eighths. The real quick and easy way to set a bar length if you, if you don't have a digital readout or some other kind of way to uh, get that measurement quick and easy. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We're gonna go ahead and run this in. All right, run this in here. Now we'll take our scale, just kind of square it up good. And I believe I said we were looking for one and five eighths on our scale measurement. So one and five eighths. All right, so that should be our, we're, we should be at our depth there. Now we'll go ahead and set a zero down here on the ways with the dial indicator. All right, we've got our dial indicator set to a zero. So that should be our proper depth for our bronze bushing there to be bored out. All right, here's our bushing once again, just confirming our OD is going to be uh, two and a quarter. So we'll probably make that uh, 2.250, but we're going to go ahead and get a mic out and uh, measure this to confirm what our finished OD is. We want probably about two thousandths press fit on that. All right, I went ahead and grabbed my stare at mic set and telescope gauges here. And we'll go ahead and uh, we're going to pull out the two to three inch mic right here. And let's go ahead and mic our bushing and uh, see where it's at. So we'll know what we need to hit when we start boring our, uh, our tube. So that's measuring two inches, 252. Almost 253. All right, so we're getting a little bit of out around this. That's 253, 253. 252 and a half, so at least a half thousandths out around, which is kind of normal for these types of bushings off the shelf parts that you buy. So what we'll shoot for is uh, two inches, 250, and that should give us uh, you know, a good two and a half thousandths press fit on this uh, bronze bushing right there. All right, so there's that. Now, I also wanted to, to show off 
my new set of Starrett telescope gauges and talk about how good a quality that these are. Now, I've talked about telescope gauges several times in past videos. I've got videos on showing how to use these. And I've always said, you've got to have a good quality set of telescope gauges that you can rely on when you're using them to take measurements. Don't use a cheap, cheaply manufactured set of telescope gauges that, that you're gonna try to rely on to get measurements. I've tried them, I've used them. You don't get consistent readings. If you use the stare at telescope gauges and you use them correctly, you're gonna get good readings whenever you do that. I've used these things thousands of times throughout my career and they've never let me down. So I wanted a brand new set here for this shop. Uh, I've been using some old secondhand telescope gauges and my other stare at set that you've seen me use many times is a, is a set I wanted to keep with my home shop. So I just got these, so the um, number S229G which is the single leg, single leg telescope gauges, okay? That's my preferred. They make them in the double leg there as well. And the double leg, you can actually get down to, uh, I believe it's 5 16 in diameter. The single leg, the smallest you can go is half inch, just something to take note of. But Starrett does a, a really great job of manufacturing these. The knurling on these are nice and crisp and sharp. The polishing on all the parts and the sliding features of it, it just, it just works really well. So always rely on a good set of telescope gauges and I would recommend the Starrett brand here. So we're gonna be using the uh, two and an eight to two and a half telescope gauges for our readings. All right, that was our first rough cut. And you can see that insert's working well for me, breaking up the chip. It's not made for good heavy cutting though. So since we're doing such a little bit here, this is gonna be fine. I wanna check my end length and we are right on it. One and seven eighths, right on it using a scale measurement there. So let me get my calipers. Very ugly finish where it's at, but we're gonna make some finish passes through here to, to get up on our size. Yeah, so we've got another 100 thousandths to go. That'll leave us about 50 thousandths. From here, I'm gonna slow the feed rate down. We're gonna kick the RPMs up, and try to improve that surface finish as we sneak up on our size. Go ahead and start our mic in and see where we're at. Should be around 2.2 .2 right now, 2.1, 2.198. Is uh, where we're micing it at. I'm going to do that one more time just to, I always do it two or three times to compare readings. I always pivot it down on the moving, the moving leg there, pivot it down and out. Once you hit top dead center, it just falls right on out of there. And I'm getting consistent reading right there. So we know we've got approximately 52 thousandths to come out of that hole. Faster feed, I'm sorry, faster speed, lower feed there. And I've got it set to five thousandths. And we'll split this into three equal cuts to land on our size. It's feeling pretty nice in there now. Put the telescope gauge in there and lean it back slightly, not too far, and then snug it up. You should be at an angle, and as you push straight down on it, it's going to center itself up in the middle of the bore. And then once you hit the top dead center, it's just going to fall out. I just catch it with my hand like that. And then hold it on the anvil with your fingers and rock it back and forth until you get that touch on the mic right there. So right there we're getting 
We're lined up with the 20 mark. 20,000, so we got 30 thousandths to go. Dial in another cut here. That should be about half. Thirty-seven. So we got thirteen thousandths to bring it to size. Check that one more time here. Telescope gauge feels good. Yep. All right. So we got thirteen thousandths to come out of that. This should be our finished cut. Extra five thousandths, back face it. We are spot on. Maybe one tenth over what I was shooting for. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and double check it. One more time. We're spot on. So we hit our mark, 2.250. That's gonna be good. Only thing left to do here, we'll put a chamfer on this to break that edge and that should be good to go. Just go ahead and break that edge. I have relief ground on this cutter here so it doesn't rub the inside of the board, doesn't rub the bottom of the tool. I'm gonna break that edge just like that. And then what I like to do is just take a little piece of emery, grabbing a piece from down here on the end of the lathe. And I like to soften that edge up right there. Even though you broke the corner, you still have a sharp edge. Just lay the emery in there like that, nice and gentle. And you want to just roll that edge there, make it nice and soft. So when the bronze is being pressed in there, it's not trying to shear the outside of the bushing right there. That's all it is to it. All right, one side is done. So what we'll do is go ahead and flip it around and uh, just repeat our process on the opposite end. this out and I'm going to go ahead and get those uh, chips out of here first. And so since our steady rest is set for our diameter that we turned, just sit it on here just like this. Actually I got to give myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean this up. So you know what I want to do is probably move it down some, but We'll do just like that. This is where you would normally put some uh, copper pads or soft jaws under here to protect that. We're not really worried about this OD because this is getting slipped in and it's gonna be welded on both ends. You're not even gonna see this down there. I'm not going to be chucking it real hard. We're, we're within five thousandths right where it sits, right there. And I haven't tightened them up yet, so we're going to have to just tighten them from here. I'm going to rotate and just go to all my high ends here. 
and it moves as I tighten it up because it's pushing it over. It's not going to take a lot of torque to um, get this where it needs to be though. So that's within one right there. That's a high. And that's a high. Half a thou. That's within a half a thousandth right there. So we're going to leave it alone. Our end may be out just a couple thousandths. We'll just go ahead and look and see, but our steady rest is going to straighten that up once we uh, bring that down. Let's see. Look at that. I mean, it's running. I don't know if you can see that. Running straight as an arrow. All right. Move our indicator and we'll go ahead and set our steady rest. And it should be good to go. Good to go. We'll use this SNMG tool to turn our OD so that we can turn it from the left to the right. We need to change the feed road direction. Yep. And then we need to go up to, let's go up to 10 thousandths on our quick change. We want AD, there we go, AD3. That should be right. All we want to do is just touch it. That's touching there. And that diameter should be within a thousand to be in the same thing. Again, it ain't real critical. It's going to be just slight, slid in a torch cut hole and weld it in place. Change tool and we'll face it. Facing's another one of those ops that's not critical on this. Even when I asked Joe about it, he goes, nah, you don't need to do that. It kind of bothers me not to have a, a clean face on this. So I just want to clean it up, make it look like I machined it, you know? That's maybe 10 thousandths off the face there. Technically, we could have faced it first and then done this, turned it and uh, chamfered it, but this is fine. All right. I'm going to set up a bar and we're going to finish this guy out. We got our clearance hole all the way through there now. So we'll go ahead and we're going to set. Let me pull out my calculator to see what I had on there. Okay, that was one. One and five eighths is what we want from the face to the face of the tool. All right, one and five eighths. That's gonna be our depth. We'll slide our indicator up here and get us a uh, zero set. All right, now we're ready to uh, finish this counter bore. Uh, this is the side that Joe is already working on. I just went ahead and cleaned it up just enough to get a little bit of a measurement on with our calipers to see where we're at. I think we've only got about 150 thousandths to uh, come out of this. So that's about 2 inch 120. So about 130 thousandths total. Mm -hmm. 
go ahead and make our first cut. Hopefully this is gonna clean that chatter up okay. Yeah, looks like it's getting under it good. All right, so now we're going to get down to our finished cuts. We've got about 30 thousandths. We'll kick up the uh, speed, reduce our feed there, and we'll make like, let's just say, three ten thousandths passes. Equal pressure there. And our last pass, obviously, we'll take what's, uh, whatever we got left that we need to take. It's going to be a ten thousandths. Yep. Five thousandths feed rate. We're running 540 ripums on the, the headstock. That'll leave us a nice finish in there. Right on par. Do another 10. And that should leave us about 10 thousandths to finish it too. Ten thousandths. Looks like ten thousandths and uh, maybe a couple of tenths there to go with it. Let's do it again. Looks like ten thousandths is going to be our magic number that we want to hit. So I've adjusted nine and a half thousandths on our dial. That should put us on a good size there. Go in an extra five thousandths, clean the face up. See if we uh, hit our mark. One under. So this one right here. So this one finished out at 2.249, which is going to be just fine. I'm not going to go in there and try to take another thousandths to match that other side there. There's plenty of clearance on the bushing for a pin because they've got it bored 20 thousandths over that. So a 3000s press fit isn't going to hurt it at all. So there we go. We got this one finished 2.249, which is going to be good. I'll give it a good tight fit on our bronze. And then go to press it in there. So just chamfer this corner, soften it up, and then this guy will be done. All right, we just got to hit that chamfer, and this guy will be finished. to take our little piece of emery, soften that edge up. All right, well, besides getting that guy out of the lay, this, this job's finished up. All right, let's get it out of here. This is finished up. Joe's, uh, he's waiting on it, so 
and get it back to them ASAP. So fairly simple, fairly simple job here to do. Some good job shop stuff, some good stuff to share. Hopefully some of the things that I continue to share with doing the lathe work here is gonna help you guys out. And my chuck key. I still gotta fab up a holder so I can keep this guy up here where I'm used to it being. All right, well that is it. Well, there we go. As I said, this all finished up there. Just giving you one last shot and some final thoughts on it. Uh, a fairly simple job to do in the lathe there, but obviously some techniques that, you know, takes a little bit of practice to get used to. Uh, getting the steady rest set, using the telescope gauges and the mic right there. Uh, just simple things that you can do. The more you do, you get better at it. And as I said, I just try to share those things every chance I get whenever we do these jobs here in the shop there uh, to try to help those guys out that watch the channel to try to learn and pick this stuff up there. All right. So anyway, this one's done. I'm going to go deliver it and uh, get back on some other projects around here. And I hope you enjoyed watching this little job. And I'm sure I got plenty more to share with you very soon.